Evacuees seek shelter in rebel-held Boisamane as Russian troops continue to shell residential buildings in the Donbass region. Rallies in support of Ukraine are held in major cities across the West. U.S. and Bulgaria meet to discuss Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but Bulgaria says it won't send military aid. As France's farming sector pushes for agricultural independence, local producers are starting to worry about the economic consequences of war. Residents from the besieged city of Mariupol are seeking shelter in Boisamane, a coastal village which has been under the control of pro-Moscow forces since 2014. These evacuees are seeking shelter in a school amid the heavy fighting. Local authorities in Mariupol say Russian troops have bombed an art school where 400 people were seeking refuge and that hundreds of the city's residents have been taken to Russia against their will. Dozens of civilians were killed or wounded by Russian forces in the eastern Donetsk region in the past 24 hours. Some 37 buildings, including residential blocks, were also damaged after intense shelling. In Kharkiv, rescue workers are moving debris after the Regional Institute of Management was reduced to rubble. While in the capital, the resistance has added more and more roadblocks, barricades and anti-tank barriers in a bid to defend the city. Kyiv City Council says 228 people have been killed, including four children, since Russia's assault on Ukraine began. 912 people, including 16 children, have also been wounded. As the death toll continues to rise, President Volodymyr Zelensky is once again calling for peace talks. He says, I am sure you understand that negotiations are not easy and pleasant, but they are necessary because it's about life. Ukraine has always been seeking a peaceful solution. We are interested in peace now. Because to us, every ruined family, every ruined home is important. Moving south, Ukraine's third most populous city, Odessa, is also bracing for an attack. Soldiers and volunteers are preparing thousands of sandbags to block Russian troops from advancing on the city centre. Volunteers in Lviv are teaching civilians how to defend themselves as Russia's assault on Ukraine continues. The city is the last outpost before Poland. However, Friday's strike just outside the international airport has served as a reminder that no city in Ukraine is off limits. Instructor Denis Yurenko estimates that his group have already coached more than a thousand people. So our program is designed for the people who have zero experience in, and even for the people who never held a gun in their hands. So first we tell the huge story about safety, because that's the fundamental. They need not to kill their people and not to kill themselves and not to injure themselves, which is why we spend a lot of time describing and showing different cases. Uh, then we show uh, the basic manipulations of how to unload the gun, how to load the gun, how to reload the gun, how to stand, how to hold, how to aim. Basic first aid is also taught and includes demonstrations of how to use a tourniquet to stop the flow of blood through a vein or artery. More than two billion refugees have already arrived in Poland fleeing the Russian invasion, but some are choosing to return home. Rosa Bilouzova works and lives in Poland, but decided to go back to Ukraine to join the Territorial Defence Force Reservists and medical personnel in Odessa. She says, I have three years of military experience. Now I'm going to defend Ukraine. There is nothing for me to do in Poland now. Being in Ukraine is more important for me. According to Polish border authorities, 238,000 Ukrainians have crossed back into their country since the war began. Thousands of people have gathered in Bern's Bundesplatz to oppose Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Ukraine's ambassador to Switzerland and the president of the Swiss Confederation addressed the crowd, while Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky joined the demonstration via video link-up, using the occasion to criticize Nestle for continuing to invest in Russia.
Tens of thousands of people have also rallied in Finland, including this demonstration in the capital Helsinki. Finland is to set up reception centers across the country to welcome refugees from Ukraine. Ukrainian nationals made up the bulk of the crowd at an anti-war protest in Paris. Many called for a total boycott of Russian gas. In New York, a mother's march in support of Ukraine was organized. New York City is home to more than 150,000 Ukrainians. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is in Bulgaria for talks with Prime Minister Kirill Petkov and Defense Minister Dragomir Zakov. They'll discuss defense cooperation and NATO's plans to boost its eastern flank amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but Bulgaria rules out military aid. Bulgaria will continue to do everything possible to aid the Ukrainians in this hard war and this huge aggression that the Russian Federation has been inflicting on them, Mr. Petkov told reporters. But being so close to the conflict right now, sending military aid for Ukraine won't be possible for us. And uh, we also talked about the things that uh, that our forces are doing together. Uh, and certainly our, we remain grateful for for his leadership and, and to the uh, to, to Bulgaria for uh, hosting a, uh, a battle group here. Meanwhile, protesters rallied in a park near Bulgaria's defense ministry while talks between the two leaders were taking place. Surrounded by police, they chanted, held banners and waved Bulgarian and Russian flags. Sat, a sleepy agricultural hub in the northwest of France, is some 2,000 kilometers from the war in Ukraine. The region is currently battling an outbreak of bird flu, but residents are also feeling the pinch. Local farmers are facing a sharp increase in energy and cereal prices as relations between Russia and the European Union go from bad to worse. This pig and chicken farmer says there is a direct impact in our farms. The price that we sell our chicken hasn't really changed while we have a 50% increase in the cost of our animals because of the increase of grain and raw material prices. So this situation is unbearable. The bloc approved a fresh raft of sanctions earlier this week. But as prices continue to rise, dairy farmer Philippe wonders what will happen in the short and medium term. He says, I hope that the EU and the government will protect the farming sector. Because we have the means to produce our food locally and feed our citizens. France has long encouraged Europe to become more independent in its agricultural production. While France produces most of its own wheat, corn and rapeseed, the country is still heavily dependent on Russian fertilizer. China has recorded its first two Covid-related deaths since January of last year. But health authorities say the elderly victims died from underlying conditions and not the disease itself. The deaths in the northeastern Jilin province come as China suffers a surge in cases, having for a long time avoided the levels of infection recorded in other parts of the world. Both victims had serious underlying diseases, a spokesperson for the Chinese health authorities said, and one of them had not been vaccinated against the coronavirus. Their coronavirus condition was mild. The direct cause of death is underlying diseases. More than 29,000 cases have been recorded across China this month. The current round of the epidemic has affected multiple locations and is widespread, the spokesperson said. The main strain is Omicron, and the number of cases in some provinces is increasing rapidly. China has so far adopted a zero-COVID policy to contain the spread of the disease, but is now seeking to move away from stringent lockdowns.